Hello. My name is Colin Windsor, and I'm speaking to you from outside this famous cathedral that is situated within this beautiful, ancient, historical city of Salisbury. Today is Sunday, and this evening we are visiting a local Christian fellowship that is meeting in a rather unusual venue. The theme of this program is Christian revival. Now, I believe that God is revitalizing, reviving, restoring His church in a mighty way in these present days. God is empowering His people, His nation, and throughout the world. The psalmist, King David, cried out to his God, My Lord, create a new heart in me. Give me a new spirit. And God responded through his prophet Ezekiel, I will give you a clean heart. I will give you a new spirit. I will change your heart of stone into a heart of flesh. A little bit later, God shared through his prophet Joel, in the days to come, I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind. Jesus tells us through his beloved disciple John, St. John's Gospel, Chapter 3. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. I tell you most solemnly, unless a man is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Rather strong words by Jesus, don't you think? Is it true? Or isn't it true? Now, if it is true, and I believe that we need to think very, very hard about it. When I was at primary school, no more than the age of five or six, we used to sing hymns at assembly. One of the hymns that seemed to register in my mind was to the words, Jesus, gentle, meek and mild. This left a lasting impression as to the nature and the purpose of God and as for his love for each one of us. A little while later, I joined a local church choir. I attended church services twice on a Sunday, uh, during the course of the week, and throughout the year on holy days. But as time went by, I increasingly became restless. I found the services dull and ritualistic. At the age of 12, the church and I parted company. When I was in my early 20s, I had this desire to know more about the world I lived in. I read books upon ancient races, their movements from continent to continent, their cultures, philosophies, creeds, and religions. And I used to speak to my friends upon the subject of Christianity, but at that time I was extremely antagonistic. And I used to come out with those familiar phrases like, but if there really is a God, why does he allow suffering? I mean, why does he allow droughts? Why does he allow famines? Why does he allow war? Well, within a few years, I found myself back in the church again. The reason being is that my daughters were attending a local organization that was attached to the church. Uh, they were obliged to go to church once a month at family service. And when I was in church, I had this awesome wonder as to God and for his creation. I started Bible classes, and eventually I came to an intellectual understanding upon the reality of Jesus Christ. And later on, I will share as to how Jesus came to my heart, how I found Jesus in a personal way, and how I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. But let's first of all go and see that building where the church meeting is happening this evening. We're now outside this Playhouse Theatre. This prestigious theatre has staged numerous reviews and productions, but this evening there's going to take place an evangelistic Christian meeting of prayer and praise, led by Reverend Brian Downwood, his friends and team. 
In a few moments, I'll be speaking to Brian about his ministry here at Salisbury and also at a similar venue at Bournemouth. Let's take a look inside and see exactly what's happening. And who comes through the doors and how do you minister to the people? What sort of people come in and what sort of direction are you going as a church? Well, this is the thrill of having a secular venue. We discovered that people that would normally never darken the door of a church felt at home in a theatre and a cinema. Young people and people that are facing great difficulties in their lives, you know, alcoholics, and drug addicts and ex-cons, people with broken marriages and broken home life, they came along and felt very much at home in this more relaxed atmosphere. And so we were thrilled that God had sent these troubled people 
to us and we found as we ministered to them that God also began to send along well-adjusted people, professional people, business folk and it's amazing how both ends of the spectrum socially dovetailed together. God gave us a wonderful spirit of unity and we've had three years of unbroken unity within the assembly. It has been quite incredible. Well, here we are at uh, this this Playhouse Theatre in Salisbury. Um, what is the link-up, the tie-up, if any? Is there a sort of a link-up and a tie-up between here and Bournemouth? And what is the overall vision for the future? Well, I think the first tie-up is that it bears the same name as the venue that we had in Bournemouth. That was also called the Playhouse Theatre, which now we are the owners of. We bought the whole complex theatre seating 650, cinema seating 225, with all the anti-rooms, all of the equipment, we are now the present owners of that facility. And now we begin again at square one, and the place that we found that was available in Salisbury is perhaps the most prestigious facility in this town, also the Playhouse Theatre. It seats just over 500 people. And we see a connection in this respect that the Bournemouth Fellowship has become the springboard to this new church here in Salisbury, which means that several of the people have moved their commitment here to Salisbury, almost like transfer membership. Maybe a dozen to 20 people that felt led to accompany us here, throw in their lot. And then the church in Bournemouth is held financially and in every way giving us moral support so that though we went to Bournemouth three years ago not knowing a soul we come to Salisbury feeling the support and the undergirding of a fellowship that is behind us in this vision well thank you Brian for sharing so clearly with us I realize now that you're going to wait upon the Lord to pray the the service is going to start uh, in a few moments, so I uh, just once again thank you very much and may God bless you and your team and all that you're doing here and in the future. Well, thank you, Colin. We trust that it won't end in Salisbury. We trust that this will become an Antioch base. That is a springboard to reach the whole of Wessex. I believe that Salisbury is the capital of the ancient kingdom of Wessex taking in the three counties of Dorset, Wiltshire, and Hampshire. And out of this fellowship in Salisbury, ministries will be developed, resources will be forthcoming. And from this Antioch base, we trust in the next 10 years that up to 10 new churches will be planted and established, and that this will become the hub where the spiritual activity and the sending forth will commence and continue. It's an exciting prospect. We're filled with glorious anticipation. We feel that God is with us, and we know that there's going to be a great gathering of souls. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Thank, thank you, Colin. God bless you. God bless you, too. Thank you. I was sharing earlier on as to how I came to an intellectual understanding upon the reality of Jesus Christ. And Brian has just mentioned about Jesus coming to our hearts and not just our minds. I'd like to share about an experience I had, how I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ in my life in a personal way, and how I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. One evening, during my personal and private prayers within my home, within my bedroom, I had a dramatic experience. I asked the Lord Jesus Christ into my life. I asked for forgiveness of my sins and my wretchedness, and for Satan to depart. And there and then, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with great joy, peace, and love. Now this was a love that I've never experienced in such depth before. It was a love that was beyond measure, beyond all human understanding. And from there onwards, as I prayed for people in their situations and their circumstances, I found this great love welling up from deep within, a love that belonged to Jesus Christ. And I had tears just pour down my face. Things have brought me closer to the Lord. 
And a deeper relationship was those songs we sing, which are so contemporary and so scriptural. And I'd like to share one of the songs that I sang on the evening of my conversion. <laughs> gentle, pure, and kind. You shine like the morning star. Jesus, how lovely you are. Hallelujah, Jesus is my Lord and King. Hallelujah, Jesus is my everything. Jesus, how lovely you are. You are so gentle, pure and kind. You shine like the morning star. Jesus, how lovely you going on all over the place tonight is November the 6th and there's going to be fireworks in this place as we seek the Lord and praise him and worship his holy name we're going to stand and sing tonight I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart come on let's stand and praise the Lord need they're here for the handouts tonight <laughs> and I tell you they need it <laughs> we're glad to welcome them in the name of the Lord and then last but not least all of the people from Bournemouth, let's hear a good hi. Ooh, no wonder I thought that was the shout that went on around Jericho. I expected the walls to come down. Welcome every single one of you. And there are folks that have traveled from various parts of the nation and in the immediate area, we welcome you. But more than anyone else, we welcome tonight the local people from Salisbury. We are glad that you are here. We invite you to be with us week by week. I believe you will see incredible things happen in this auditorium. To my knowledge, that have never happened before in this place. You will see people saved and healed and filled with the Holy Ghost and delivered in the name of Jesus. You will see Christ building his church in the hearts and lives of men and women and boys and girls. They are the most exciting days that have ever been in the church of Jesus Christ. I have been serving the Lord for 40 years and they're the best days of my life. And every week we expect God to do something brand new. And so we welcome you every Sunday night to meet with us in this place at half past six. There will be a few teething problems, I'm sure, but the Lord will help us through them. And before long, we will generate an atmosphere of God in this place that we believe will overspill right through Monday through Saturday as people gather in this venue for other activities. We will leave a deposit of God's Holy Spirit in this, this building will never be the same again for having had God's wonderful people here to worship the Lord. How many believe that tonight? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I do too with all my heart. Give a minister and song to us. Amen, Les. Praise God. It's really great, you know, to be here tonight and see all your lovely faces. Hope you like my lovely face. <laughs> you know, my husband and I, sounds good. You know, I've been waiting 10 years for a husband. And God is good. He brings the best. We went today to the cathedral 
which is so beautiful, isn't it? You know, and we had a look around, and we were walking there, and I thought, you know, there's a lot of people here, but they're all dead. Some of them were like this, some of them were stuck in the wall, some on the floor. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? And I thought, Lord, this is really horrible. People come to this church to see all these people, you know, these stiffs, <laughs> so-called. And I thought, I thank God that when I go to church, it's alive. And, you know, we don't have to go and look at statues and figures and things like that. But, you know, and I'm going to sing a song or two songs. And it's, Lord, we bring our worship here to you. And then I'm going to sing, All Hail the Lamb. You know, if you know any of these at all, then you just join in with me. And let's just worship Jesus together. You know, I'm so glad that I'm a Christian tonight. ask Heavenly Father that your word will now just reach into our hearts and will divide spirit from marrow, the spiritual from the carnal, and that Christ will be exalted and our lives radically changed. In Jesus' name, amen. One person's witness. And I believe with all my heart tonight that the city of Salisbury could be turned upside down through the witness of one man. You give me one man, one woman that's a true evangelist in this city, and I tell you we'll see large crowds like Jesus ministered to, whether in Samaria or the Decapolis. One person with a heart for God and a passion for souls that's anointed of the Holy Ghost, just bearing witness wherever they are. I tell you, they'll soon gather a crowd of people around Christ. It happened in the Scripture, and it will happen in this day and age as men and women go out bearing witness of the power of Jesus in their life. In the last century, one of the greatest preachers that ever graced a pulpit was Henry Ward Beecher of America, he was a famous preacher, a great orator. And on one occasion, he agreed to do a pulpit swap with a little preacher out of the sticks in the villages. And on this particular Sunday morning, Beecher arrived at the little chapel. When he got there, no one was there to greet him. The weather was very inclement. The snow was falling. The temperature was sub-zero, below freezing point. And he waited around for some 20 minutes and not one person turned up that day to the house of God. And so he decided again to mount his horse and return from whence he had come. Just as he was climbing on his steed through the snow and the ice, he saw one single solitary worshipper making his way to the house of God. He dismounted, shook hands with the man, and they both went into the chapel. And Henry Ward Beecher, 
He preached that day as though he was ministering to thousands of people. And he had a congregation of one. After the meeting, they shook hands and parted. But 20 years later, Henry Ward Beecher was preaching at a large rally in Ohio. And after the meeting, someone came up and shook his hand. He said, do you remember me? And Beecher said, I'm sorry, I don't. You know, it's a bit like that with preachers. You go everywhere and they come up and they smile. They say, you remember me? Now, they're one of thousands of faces that you've met along the road. And you have to try and look intelligent and say, yes, sure. Where was it? You say to your wife, who is it? You know, and this man came up and said, do you remember me? And Beecher said, no. He said, do you remember 20 years ago on a cold, frosty, snowy winter's day? You came and preached in that little chapel, and I was the only worshiper. And Beecher said, I remember you. He said, I want to tell you what's happened over the last 20 years. You see that steeple, that church? It's my church. And I want you to know that through the results of my ministry, the whole of this state is populated with hundreds of people that have come to Christ through the preaching of God's Word one man's witness and a whole community can be one to Jesus he is the man delivered from demons he went back and told his family and friends and when Jesus returns there's 4,000 people waiting to greet him one woman sitting on a well a prostitute Jesus gave her water and she went to fetch her neighbors and friends and said come see a man that told me everyone and when Philip goes down some years later the place is filled with joy because they're ready to receive him why is that the witness of one man the witness of one woman God give us such men such women in Salisbury that this community may be touched by the power of Almighty God <laughs> Lord, we just praise your name tonight. Father God, we just want to worship you because you are the mighty God. We want to worship you tonight because we realize that you are here in our midst. Hallelujah. We want to thank you tonight because we recognize that you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. And Lord, you have given of yourself to us tonight. Lord, we just want to exalt your mighty name. We want to lift our hands to you and exalt you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father God, tonight at the commencement of this new church for you, we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will have free course among us. We pray, Father God, that tonight every heart... ...changed by the power of God. And in this meeting, God has been speaking to you. You say, Brian, I've never felt like this in a religious meeting. Something's different in this place. No, it's not the place. It's not even the people. It's the person of Jesus. And he's here tonight. And he wants to become your personal savior and friend. You may open your heart right now and say, Jesus, I receive you. I receive you. You may have been a believer so many years ago, but you've lost your way. You're backslidden away from God. And your heart feels as though you're living in the midst of famine and drought. I want to tell you, he wants to restore to you the joy of your salvation tonight. And he wants to give you another start, a second chance. Why don't you commit yourself to him again? And say, oh God, oh God, come again to me like the springtime. And renew my heart's dedication. And I will give praise to you. Do it. And if you have a need in your body, God is here to meet you right now. I believe as we worship the Lord, God is coming to you. He's going to heal. He's going to deliver. He's going to save. He's going to bless. He's coming to just extend his heart and his grace towards you. All you have to do is to believe. Don't demand. Don't make any requests. Just simply believe. And let your believing in Jesus be the key to your receiving from him tonight. Josie, just lead us in that chorus as we sing together in just a few moments.